Hi folks, this is Perry. So today I wanted to talk about my new tractor. Uh, I got a new tractor. I uh, sold my Bobcat and my Kubota and bought this. This is a brand new 2016 uh, LS Tractor XR3135C. And this is uh, part of their premium line. And given that there's little to no information on YouTube about these, I thought I'd just do a little walk around and describe this tractor. Uh, I've had it for a few weeks now and uh, wanted to give an impression of uh, you know, the niceties and whatnot. So, if you haven't heard of LS Tractor, uh, they're actually, the company is called LS Mtron, and it's a spin-off of LG, uh, you know, the big South Korean firm, and they are actually the OEM for New Holland. So, if you go to the New Holland dealer and you buy one of their Boomer or Workmaster series tractors that are less than 50 horsepower, it's going to be manufactured by LS in South Korea. Uh, this tractor, it would be equivalent to, say, uh, a Boomer 37 uh, or a uh, maybe a Workmaster 37. Uh, they have a couple different varieties. I've seen the open station version of this tractor at the New Holland dealer, uh, and I believe it was called a Workmaster 37. Um, so let me just kind of go over some of the things about this. Uh, this particular uh, model is the 3135. Uh, it replaced the 3037 and what makes it different between the 3037 and the uh, New Holland is that the New Holland has the tier 4 Shibura uh, three-cylinder engine and the 3037 has the Shibura engine. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to buy this tractor is that this has uh, LS's own three-cylinder turbocharged common rail diesel, uh, and the regen cycle on this is supposed to be four hours, or excuse me, 50 hours, and the Shiburas are four hours. So this one will go into regen every 50 hours, whereas the Shibura will go into regen every four hours. Now, if you pop the hood and you look under one of the Shiburas, it's got a, a DPF that's twice as big as that. Now, a little bit of detail on that DPF. Uh, when I reviewed the manual that came with this, they referred to that DPF as a DOC plus DPF, or diesel oxidation catalyst plus diesel particulate filter. And in the parentheses, they called it a CCRT, which is a continuously uh, catalyzing, regenerating uh, technology, which means, for the layperson, is that it doesn't actually go through a regen cycle. Now, LS Tractor has all this stuff about, you know, regen and control of regen, but there's no fuel injectors on this. You know, there's no fuel uh, to get in there. It just has a temperature probe, and it has... Uh, um, it has a, a pressure gauge. So what I believe is actually happening, because these catalysts, the way they work is once they're above uh, 300 degrees, they're self-catalyzing. So it's a low temperature catalyst, which makes the, the particulate filter constantly regenerating. Now, what happens is if you run this tractor at idle for too much, or uh, for too long, and it you know, builds up soot in there if you don't run the tractor at a high enough RPM. So what they're really doing is whenever the pressure gets uh, out of whack, whenever it reads a, uh, a pressure differential that's too high, it actually just idles the engine up for a half hour and lets it go through its continuous catalyz catalyzing process. Uh, just making sure that the engine temperature, you know, exhaust temperature is up high enough to be able to initiate the continuous regeneration process. So it's not a diesel particulate regeneration process like a traditional uh, system is. It's actually uh, more like a catalytic converter and it just needs a, you know, a little bit higher exhaust temp to light off. So I bought this engine. Uh, this is a whiz-bang engine. It's a common rail diesel. It has EGR, it has an EGR cooler. It's got a diesel oxidation catalyst. It's got a DPF. Uh, you know, it's a lot higher tech. Um, and it has the world's smallest turbocharger I've ever seen. Uh, 
Now, uh, another couple of things I learned about this engine is that this is actually the same engine that they put all the way up to the 55 horsepower. So the same engine can be spec'd out from 35 to 55 horsepower. All they do is change the engine calibration. Now, the difference is, is that this is the T3 engine and then they have a, a T5 designation. And I've already looked at the 4145. It's the same turbocharger. So when you look at it, it's the same turbocharger. So now let's talk about the loader a little bit. A lot of complaints that people have is that the loader doesn't lift high enough. Uh, you know, I guess I can kind of understand that, but at the same time, uh, you know, perhaps their expectations are a little greater than mine. Um, that loader, this loader lifts 92 inches into the air, which is just shy of eight feet. So, you know, it's uh, four inches shy of eight feet. Um, now, whenever I was uh, using clamp-on forks to unload the backhoe out of the back of my truck, uh, I was maxing out the lift on it. But it was enough, and that's all that really mattered to me. Uh, Another reason I bought this tractor is that it has the skid steer bucket. Um, you know, I looked at Branson, I uh, briefly looked at Mahindra, I looked at uh, Kubota, and I looked at uh, New Holland. And I really wanted a skid steer clamp-on uh, bucket. Um, now, looking at this design right here, it's a very sturdy design. I've got another skid steer bucket that isn't quite as durable as this. Uh, you know, this right here is 3 8 steel, and their bucket, you know, that's 3 8 this is 3 8 um, or 10 millimeter as it may be, but this is a very sturdy mount on this bucket. Uh, sturdier, you know, sturdier than some of the other buckets I've seen, and I added these, you know, hooks on here so that I could, you know, have more utility, uh, but... So I wanted a skid steer bucket. Uh, this bucket is a 15 cubic feet, so it's a, it's more than half a yard. Uh, it's a 66 inch wide bucket. The cutting edge is a half inch thick. Uh, the body of it, the sides are 3 16 And then underneath here, there's actually a like a two by four or two by three steel uh, beam that's welded uh, through on the underside and this is a rolled edge so they've got a reinforced beam underneath here and the the base right here is I'm not really sure it's probably 3 16 it could be thinner but um, overall I've been pleased with the bucket uh, you know lifting it up and, and putting pressure on the cutting edge I haven't it hasn't you know flexed and bent um, so the uh, this is a four-wheel drive tractor uh, it has a very unusual differential scheme. As you can see, there's no pumpkin sticking down because the reduction is actually done in the hubs. You can see the hubs are fairly large. That's where the primary reduction is on the four-wheel drive. So right here, it's just a uh, bevel drive that goes to a set of axles. So you get more clearance underneath there. Uh, the lowest hanging uh, component on the tractor is the loader frame on the bottom here. Uh, and that partially, I think, is due to the fact that uh, that loader frame is there sort of as an auxiliary. The backhoes that are equipped on these, uh, you know, they hang down and that loader frame is part of that. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of torque that I could see being carried by that loader frame. Um, that tubing is like... It looks like maybe two by two, three sixteenths wall, or yeah, it's it's not very thick material, so you're not going to get a lot of bending load on that. So, but uh, one of the things I had a concern about when I first got it is that the loader valves hang down right here. I was worried that that might catch on something, but so far it hasn't been a problem. Uh, the rear tires are 43 inches tall. Uh, this is the industrial tire package. So these are 7 by 14s in the front, which are, I think, what, 20, 23 inches tall. And then the rears are 43 inches. So uh, it's a fairly decent sized tire. So um, let me talk about the cab a little bit. Uh, well, actually, let's go back around here. One of the nice things, uh, I went to the New Holland dealer and I looked at what they had. Their tractors only came with one set of remotes, and this comes with two sets of remotes as, you know, a standard uh, build-out. And as you can see by the delete plate, there's room for a third remote 
to install on this tractor if I really needed it, but I really don't need three, two remotes, it's just fun. Uh, so I do have a quick hitch installed on this. Uh, I really like these Land Pride quick hitch 15s. Um, this Land Pride hitch, it was $400, but uh, I think it was really worth it because any day I don't pinch my fingers and you know get a blister or something like that is a good day. So uh, these do, one of the things that's different is these do have an upgraded uh, uh, category, you know, one hitch. So this right here, if you don't have a quick hitch, allows you to extend the arms out wider than the pins without having to loosen these side links. So that way you can get the uh, implement installed onto the lower links. Uh, and then this will just push back in, it telescopes back in. Uh, this is your adjustment for leveling out or, you know, putting a, a rake into the uh, the bottom links so that you can grade off a, you know, off grade. Um, this right here is your lockout for your draft control. So on this tractor, the draft control is on the top link. And when the top link pushes forward, it pushes on this little, this lever right here, which then pulls this shaft back. And basically your draft control inside controls how sensitive this is to that throw. And there's another aspect here is once your, your draft control is unlocked, there's actually this piece of metal right here acts as a spring. So as this pushes forward, it'll push this, but then it'll get bottomed out on this spring right here, which will create additional tension before it actually bottoms out on the bracket. So there's a, there's a little bit of progressive action to that. Um, this is also a nice touch right here. This is uh, this can be used for either hooking up to your agricultural seven pin, which this is a nice touch right here that the New Hollands didn't have. Uh, this is a standard seven pin round agricultural connector, or if you, you know, it, it's basically the same thing as what you'd find on an RV trailer, uh, but it doesn't have brakes, it just has an auxiliary pin. Uh, so you could hang your, uh, your cable, plug it into here, hang it off of here with a spring so that it, you know, doesn't uh, lay on the ground. Or if you don't have an implement on here and you don't have a quick hitch, this hooks onto here and holds your top link out of the way. So that way you're not dragging. Another thing too is it comes with a PTO cover. So it keeps your PTO clean when not in use. That's a nice feature. This PTO shroud right here is just sheet metal, nothing real special. It does come with a telescoping drawbar. This is the furthest forward position. Um, whenever you extend it out, the drawbar end is actually about as far out as the end of the bottom link. So if you were to uh, put a drawbar across here to support this uh, without the quick hitch installed, it would work. Um, now, uh, the PTO is a little bit easier to get on and off uh, because there's more room around it than my old Kubota. So that's a, a welcomed addition. And I didn't have to change any of my PTO shaft links. So this does have a full lighting package. It's got blinkers and tail lights, and those are brake lights as well. Uh, it's got rear view mirrors that are adjustable in multiple positions. So if you have it back like this, it's easier to see in the cab. This forward like that makes it easier to open the cab door and then you've got your clearance lights and your blinkers right here and then on the cab these lights right here are your auxiliary lights those are your working lights and these are your headlights high low beams uh, Honestly, when you've got the bucket up in place, these really don't work all that well, so you're pretty much using these because they're seeing out above the bucket. Once you have the bucket up for clearance when you're going down the road, it's, it can obscure uh, the headlights. And then, of course, you've got this uh, bull bar on the front right here so that when you're using the loader, if you, you know, happen to run into something, you're not running your fancy chromed plastic, you know, uh, nose into it, you're putting the bull bar into it. There's something worth mentioning about the airflow considerations on this tractor. This entire area right here, this entire area 
all this perforated metal, that's all air intake for the cooling system. Now, the reason why that matters is, see, this is all, this is all gasketed right here. This is a huge, a huge area for air to be drawn into, but more importantly, to keep crap out of your radiator. Now, the radiator on this, it does have a removable screen. You remove this thumb screw right here, and the screen slides out, and you can, you know, clean all the chaff and whatnot that has stuck to the screen. But for the most part, the bulk of it is filtered by these side panels and this nose panel which is a nice feature. I've read some people having problems with their tractors and uh, you know, the, the tractor specifically reading about Mahindra tractors or Branson tractors overheating uh, because stuff, you know, chaff got into the radiator after five hours. I've got 10 hours on this and the radiator hasn't been cleaned out yet. It's, it's nice and clean. Um, so I really like that. Now on the inside, because this is a cab tractor, and I, I got the cab tractor because I plan on keeping this tractor for a good 20 years at least, and uh, I wanted something that was going to keep me from freezing in the winter and sweltering in the summer. So let's get into the cab here, and let me show you around. It's really a cold wind outside so from inside the cab you've got windshield wiper you've got four vents up front those are the defroster vents you've got two vents on either side for uh you know overhead and then here's your hvac controls it's got a push button ac which is nice for defrosting it, it gets kind of humid in here whenever you're inside and you're you know, you're breathing and the heater's on, uh, it can actually fog up the windows. So you just turn the AC on while the heat's on. Um, so your fan control, this is your five positions for, uh, for the, you know, which, which vents to use. And this is the heat. The only thing that kind of bothers me is that there's only five positions for temperature control. So um, you know, it looks like one of those infinitely variable styles like Ford, but it's really just a five position switch. So it kind of leaves you eh, wondering a little bit. Now, right here, this is your fresh air or recirculate. Uh, this does have actual cartridge filters for the cab air. So there's one on each side. You can kind of see louvers right there. So this does have, uh, filters for dust for the outside. And, uh... Right here we have our controls, our in-cab controls. We've got, this is our detent remote for the rear. This is our uh, momentary. This is your position control for up, down. And this is your draft control. So all the way forward is least, you know, least sensitive and all the way back is most sensitive. So whenever that link pushes forward and in the most sensitive position, it'll raise that, uh, it'll raise the lower links up. Whenever it's all the way forward, the forward, the upper link has to push forward quite a lot for this to actually react and raise it. So uh, this is what they call position and draft control. So you set your depth with the position control and you set the sensitivity uh, with the draft control. Now it does have these little thumb actuated detents right here for adjusting where you want your, uh, your upper, um, where you want the stop to be for your lower position so this is all the way up and then you can adjust how deep you want your position to be by uh, setting that detent. Uh, this is your cruise control right here so this allows you to uh, by default it's the PTO speed is what the cruise control is so whenever you flip this to on uh, and then you press this button momentarily as long as your foot's not on the brake it'll raise the engine RPM to 23-28 RPM uh, so that, that allows you to go into PTO mode real quick and easy without having to use the hand lever or the foot throttle. Uh, this right here is your, um, that's your beacon, <laughs> which I don't have installed. There's, there's a plug on each side. Uh, you can install beacon lights. It's pre-wired for it. This is your windshield washer and, uh, wiper. These are, this is your forward overhead lights 
right here, which are really handy for doing motor work at night. And these are your rear overhead lights, which are up. Uh, you can't quite see them from inside the cab. And then, of course, there's a stereo. Uh, mine did not come with a stereo. I installed a Sony. I, I read a recommendation on uh, a forum that the Sony was uh, recommended by LS, or at least some people. So I went to Walmart and I bought this Sony. And I had a pair of JL 4-inch uh, speakers, two-way speakers, that I installed. It had speakers in there, but they just they didn't sound as good. So I had these laying around and installed them. There's your FM radio antenna. And then this is a, a Bluetooth CD player, you know, USB, you know, it has all the usual whiz bang stuff. It was a hundred bucks. Um, here's your loader stick. Uh, it does have a float detent all the way forward. Uh, your standard loader uh, settings. This is a cable operated gizmo. It, it has a little bit of slack in it um, that I might uh, take up, but uh, it doesn't really bother me too much right now. Uh, here's your, your shifter which I already got grease on because I've got grease on my <laughs> on my jacket um, so it's a four speed transmission with a neutral between three and four so it's a little bit awkward in that regard there's your foot throttle and then your brakes clutch uh, some of the other things so this is the forward uh, forward clearance lights right here horn hazards uh, auto manual PTO so auto PTO uh, what it does is it turns off the uh, PTO whenever you push the clutch in. When manual, the PTO continues running. So at the end of where you're you know, running your mower or something like that, you push the clutch in, the PTO will turn off. That's a nice feature. So uh, there's your PTO. PTO is a push down and turn affair. And then to release it, you just push it down again and the spring returns it. It has a really nice dash. I'm not going to turn on the uh, ignition really. Well, I suppose I could turn the ignition on so you could see the dash, but yeah, lots and lots of idiot lights, but it's got an hour meter, volt meter. Um, it also tells you engine RPM. Uh, it has the cruise control shows up below the hour meter when you're using it. Uh, coolant temp, fuel level, all that stuff. Uh, these are your DPF controls. You know, honestly, I'm not going to mess with those. This is your shuttle shift because this is a shuttle shift transmission, uh, forward and backwards. This is your blinker left and blinker right, not self canceling. Uh, these are your flight controls. But um, so this is overall, I I'm you know very happy with this tractor. Uh, the only thing that really stands out as being a, a sort of a dislike is the exhaust. Uh, the exhaust smell on this, it, it will burn your nose and it will burn your eyes if you are around it for too long. I'm not sure if it's just because the engine's starting or still breaking in or if it's a function of the, the diesel catalyst uh, converting the exhaust and you know outputting uh, you know, various uh, nitrogen oxide chemicals, etc. But uh, it does, it, it is a rather strong odor. So, but anyway, uh, I just wanted to, you know, leave you with this. Uh, just the uh, walk around of my tractor, and uh, I think uh, what I'll do is I'll start it up and let you hear what it sounds like inside here. Wait for my. Uh, Glow plug light to go out. So it is relatively quiet in the cab. Uh, they tell you what you should do is to warm it up, you run it at two to three minutes at 1500 RPM before you start running the machine. And this is a drive by wire engine, so this foot pedal and that uh, hand throttle, those. Those are not cable actuated. There's no actual throttle on this. Uh, it just goes to the computer, and the computer controls uh, the engine. So this is not a mechanical diesel. It's fully electronic. But uh, yeah, I really like this. Thanks for watching.